My mother was diagnosed with a type of leukemia. She was diagnosed on a Monday. She died that Friday. And nobody was there to sort of hold our hand or walk us through. Watching my mother's death was very frightening. It couldn't have been uglier. There was nothing about it that was okay. There was nothing about it that was peaceful. It was a failure on so many levels. Given that I know that we're all gonna die, maybe there are ways of preparing, you know, the psyche, the soul, so that the journey is not so unbearable. I thought it would be a rich experience to be with just a group of, of women who had cancer because they are so deeply supportive of one another. So I was drawn to that. I did it once and then I really liked it. It's in a beautiful place and it's people from every socioeconomic group and it's the playing field is leveled because everybody's got cancer and they've just become unbelievably close. Deeply, they fall in love with each other, so I get to witness their deep love. They're, they're just these moments that are so sacred with people, and you carry them with you. I had this sort of waking vision, waking dream. I was, you know, I was very sad. I, you know, we both knew she was going to die, and um, I had this, uh, a sort of uh, vision of myself just lying down under one of these trees and it was in the fall that we were working there and then just let the leaves cover me and in the winter let the snow cover me and basically giving up dying. Um, I, I was just uh, pretty overwhelmed with grief and also with the idea of, of being alone. It was very scary. Try to go into the experience with that person as though you're on the ride with them not like it's happening to you, but where you really are able to navigate the waters with them. I came and approached myself lying under the tree and said, I'm, I'm going to take you home. And uh, I'm I'm going to live with you, and I'm going to take care of you, and it's going to be all right. It gave me a lot of hope that maybe I could get through this. I think the experience, when you talked about it being sacred, taking care of her, yeah. it was sacred knowing the two of you, and it was a great gift for me. Yeah. So I think sometimes people ask, how do you do this? And it's such, it's such a deep teaching. I have felt lonely sometimes in caring for people with cancer because People find each other and they're part of a group and they feel deeply connected, but I don't always feel connected to anybody when this is going on. A lot of it is about sort of the magic of what, what someone has to share, you know, and, um, and recognizing that uh, it's kind of like dancing, I'm, I'm leading and following both, you know, I'm being both part both dancers, yeah. um, much of the time just sort of seeing where, where the dance goes. You know, once you've been part of bringing joy to these people, you just, it's addictive. You just want to keep doing that. You want to make life better for someone who's really, really sick. I have, haven't counted how many work, people I've worked with individually. I know there have been several hundred. When someone is sick, there's, there can be something very profoundly enlivening about the whole experience. When I see people stay close to the end, it's very soothing and heartening, and and I always think, well, if I can help other, if I can help people do that, maybe someone can help me do that too, mm. <laughs> you know.